Hey Luke here with CaptainCarp.com and I'm going to show you how to catch carp during the spawn. Well, good morning and welcome to another episode of Catfish and Carp. Um, I have gotten up way too early to go try to do some carp fishing this morning and uh, I've got two types of baits here in front of me that I'm going to show you. The first one is Ponko pack bait. You've probably seen me use this a lot in my videos. It's sweet corn, Ponko breadcrumbs, and strawberry jello mixed together. It makes what's called a pack bait. It's a bait that you can squish into a ball and pack around your lead and use it as kind of a castable chum. And that's going to be what I'm putting on the end of my line today. And over here, I've got a five gallon bucket half full of boiled feed corn and it's also got some boiled bird seed, some pigeon feed mixed in there as well. And yesterday night I went and chucked out probably about 10 pounds of this stuff into the water right around where I was going to be fishing. Spread it out really good and uh, hopefully all night long that's been bringing in the carp and they've been rooting around trying to find all those little kernels of corn and hopefully there's a few carp hanging out in there when I arrived this morning. Well, you can see behind me where I'm targeting. This is a big shallow lagoon, and this is a great location pre-spawn. The carp tend to spawn in the springtime and sometimes in the fall as well. And before and after the spawn, they gather in tight schools in these shallow lagoons to spawn. And they like to spawn on emergent reed beds and sunken logs and rocks and things like that. So if you find a shallow lagoon with a lot of this emergent vegetation you see here behind me, that's a great place to target. Now during the spawn, the carp don't eat a lot, but before and after the spawn, they're extremely hungry and they're in tight schools. So if you can find the right spot, it's incredible fishing action. Now we've got a really late spring here. It's been really cold until a few days ago and suddenly it was warm. The leaves have come out, but you can see the, uh, the vegetation in the lake still isn't quite developed. Um, once that vegetation really develops in this area, that's what triggers the spawn. But uh, we're going to see if the fish are in here. We've chummed this spot really good last night and uh, we'll give it a go. Let me show you my gear really quick. I've got a Daiwa BRI 3500 bite and run reel. It's got two drags on it, a top drag for fighting the fish and a bottom drag for when the rod's in the rod holder. And it's got this clutch switch that chooses between the two drags. So when you're fighting the fish, the switch goes up and the drag is tight. When it's in the rod holder, you put the switch down and the line plays out. That way if a carp grabs your rig and takes off running, your rod doesn't go flying in the water. It's a really good inexpensive reel. I've owned a lot of them. They cost about 45 bucks. The rod I'm using is from a company called Chubb. It's the Outcast Stalker Rod. It's six foot one piece and it's a 2.75 test curve rod. Test curve is how the British measure the power of a rod. This is a British carp fishing rod. If you're in the US and don't want to buy a foreign rod, just get a seven foot medium heavy action rod and that'll do you pretty good. Uh, Ugly Stick GX2, it's not a bad choice, uh, or many of the bass rods out there. Okay, this is my rig. This is what we call a method lead. It's an inline lead that's flat and has these ribs that help grab the pack bait that I showed you earlier. And I've got about four inches of leader, that's 20 pound spider wire right there. And then I've got what's called a hair rig. And you can see here, I've got this little piece of plastic fake corn attached to a piece of string coming off the shank of the hook. And you do that tying what's called a hair rig. And I have a lot of videos on how to make these rigs. So if you wanna see those videos, check the link in the description. The purpose of the hair rig is that it's really hard for fish to steal your bait this way. So if you have a problem with turtles and bluegill pecking at your corn, this will keep you from hooking up the, the bluegills and turtles. And also, you have a much better hookup ratio with the carp, especially if they're shy. All right, we're gonna squish some of this Ponko pack bait in there. 
nice and tight. And once that bait's squished onto your method lead, just take the fake horn, mush it right there, and you're good to go. Okay, it's been like three minutes and I'm already getting a lot of bites. Yeah, there's something going on here. I'm never 100% sure what's going on in the end of my line, but I'm pretty sure that bite I just got was actually a liner. When you're throwing out a pile of chum and you cast on it, the carp come in and they'll bump into your line. Oop. And oh, that's a carp. He has got some wounds on him. I've never seen a carp so beat up. Yeah, this is a really big carp for this water. Feels like he's about 20 pounds. Look at all these wounds he's got. He's got a hole I can see actually into cartilage into his bone. Look at the mouth on him. It suck up a golf ball. But he's really beat up. He's got some sort of skin fungus or something. I can see. I can see all the way to his ribs. There's a hole in here that's rotted all the way to his ribs. He's got these bleeding ulcers all over him. I've seen that on catfish and carp. We're just gonna get him back in the water so he can spawn and he's having a rough time, so. Oh, what a powerful fish. I've seen carp with little sores or ulcers on them, but I've never seen a carp that sick before. If we were in England, I would have little first aid kit to put on all of his sores and stuff but these are wild carp and <laughs> we're in the US so it's just how it is life's rough in the wild man that's a lot of fun if you guys haven't tried carp fishing you got to give it a go they're just an amazingly hard fighting fish they're a challenging fish to catch but we have access to tons of them they're just a major untapped resource here in the US Accidental release. <laughs> All right, that's two fish in 15 minutes, so not too bad. And from the sounds of it, I'll have another one here in a few seconds. Now, this is my bite alarm. It's a Delcom TXI Plus bite alarm. Really high-end, very durable bite alarm. Very sensitive. Love these things. Not completely necessary in this situation because I'm right here by my rods. But when you're fiddling with all your camera equipment and you have your rods spread out, it's uh, really nice to have. If you're fishing at night, these things are invaluable. Apparently the spawn's already started because I just saw two carp spawning over there. Uh, they, they get up into the flooded brush over there and up into the uh, emergent vegetation and they start thrashing around. You'll see this carp in like one foot of water just freaking out. You can definitely catch f carp during the spawn because not all of them are spawning at the same time. Oh, another beautiful carp. Real typical size for this location. And I own many European style carp fishing nets and they're great. However, my favorite is this net from Cabela's. It's called the uh, Magnum Rubber. It's got a 96 inch handle. Look at that thing, okay? It's aluminum handle. It's got this stretchy, fish friendly rubber mesh. And I have landed 40 plus pound catfish in this net. I can lift fish up over the rail of my boat. I can lift them over the handrail on docks. If there's brush and rocks and stuff on the shoreline, like we often have here in the US, I can lift them up over that. This net costs 90 bucks from Cabela's, and I'll put a link in the description. So, you really don't need as much gear as I have today. 
to be honest guys okay you can get a couple 10 15 dollar rod and reel combos from walmart a can of sweet corn a couple eagle claw hooks and you can do the exact same thing using forked sticks instead of vital arm Well, another beautiful long lean carp. Look at that. Well guys, it's been about an hour and a half and I need to head to work. So I think I'm gonna put this guy back and call it a day, but I hope you've enjoyed this video and uh, had a good time. There you go. We've got a lot of fun videos coming up. I've got a trip to Tennessee to go fishing for stripers and catfish. I've got a trip to Mi uh, Mississippi where I'm hoping to catch some buffalo. Then I'm going to Pennsylvania to catch some carp. And then we're going to go to Utah, Japan, Canada, uh, Alaska, and who knows where else. But we've got a lot of great fishing videos coming up here in the next two months. So stay tuned, guys, and click subscribe. Thanks.